So did you know that the Victorians thought this would be enough beef in a soup to feed 20 people? So it's a new year, lots happening. I've consciously uncoupled uh, with the top of my middle finger. And like many people, I haven't been paid since before Christmas. So I'm trying to find low cost recipes. So I was trying to take some inspiration from history and find out some historical low budget recipe books. I started with the Victorians, purely because lots of socioeconomic changes led to widespread poverty. So I figured that the Victorians probably knew a thing or two about austerity. And in my research, I came across some really interesting sounding recipes from a Victorian chef called Alexis Sawyer. Now Sawyer was a French chef living in London. He had a good reputation as the chef at one of the private members clubs in London. On the day of Queen Victoria's coronation, he apparently cooked over 2,000 breakfasts for members of the Reform Club in London. Some of his recipes are apparently even still served there today. But Sawyer actually used his talents to do campaigning work. These days we're used to celebrity chefs taking on good causes and backing campaigns for charities. But Sawyer was one of the first celebrity chefs who used his talents in the kitchen for a good cause. In 1847, the government actually sponsored Sawyer to leave his plush job at the Reform Club to travel to Ireland to set up soup kitchens that fed up to 5,000 people a day uh, who were struggling with the Irish potato famine. He wrote cookbooks with cheap recipes to help feed the masses during a time of austerity. And later in life, he actually traveled to the front lines of the Crimean War to try and assist with feeding the British military. So I'm gonna try and recreate one of his recipes for eating on a budget. So according to a Victorian, this is how you cook a beef soup for 20 people. I first put one ounce of dripping into a saucepan capable of holding two gallons of water. Put on my special, I chopped off my finger glove. So he's told us to start off our recipe with one ounce of beef dripping. For a soup that's supposed to feed about 20 people, it feels like a reasonable starting point in terms of fat. And to our beef dripping, we need to add a quarter of a pound of leg of beef without bones, cut into square pieces about half an inch. Well, let's illustrate the point. This is the amount of beef he's recommending for a soup that feeds 20 people. This is definitely cooking on a budget. And as well as the beef, we need to add in two middle-sized onions, peeled and sliced. So another fun fact about soya is he's actually credited as the inventor of fish and chips. Now this has a few caveats, as it seemed he essentially combined two different forms of food that were already invented. The invention of battered fish is often credited to 17th century Jewish immigrants who'd settled in London. So they used to batter their fish as a means of keeping it fresh, so they didn't have to cook or kindle a flame on the Shabbat day of rest. And given this would often overlap with the Christian tradition of fast on Friday, eating fish on a Friday may have actually helped Jewish people fleeing the Inquisition by helping them conceal their religious and cultural identities. And soya would apparently buy this coated fish from Jewish street vendors, and he came up with the idea of pairing it with chips that he'd seen in Belgium. And then he wrote the first published recipe for fish and chips in his book, Shilling Cookery for the People. So yeah, it seems that a classic British national dish was actually put together by a Frenchman. Cheers, France. I can already hear the right wing baying. In goes our large amount of onion. So the next stage of the recipe goes, I then set the saucepan over a coal fire, hoping induction's okay, and stirred the contents around for a few minutes with a wooden or iron spoon until fried lightly brown. Don't have an iron spoon, but this should do. So now getting some color on the meat and the onion. So now we've cooked our beef and onion mix a little bit. He says, I had then ready washed the peeling of two turnips, 15 green leaves or tops of celery, and the green part of two leeks, the whole of which I must observe are always thrown away. So let me get this straight. I have two turnips and he says we're using the peeling of two turnips. I'm gonna just choose to believe that he just kind of did shavings of the entire two because I do not see why you would make a soup out of the peeling of turnips and not the actual vegetable. Take the leaves off. You know, I was gonna mandolin this actually. Can't be bothered. This is a really bad idea, I know, especially given that I'm already injured. That's actually worse. This is a very resistant turnip. It does not want to be mandolin. Neither do my fingers though. Ah, that was dangerous. I'm getting post-traumatic stress doing this. Come on, this is a serious show. People are counting on you. People are counting on you to do this right. So now we have the peeling of two turnips. 15 green leaves or tops of celery. Let me get this straight. So we're not even talking celery stalks here, but the precious, precious, nutrient-rich leaves of celery. I mean, I know we're coming up with budget-friendly soup, but surely just like using the celery leaves and not the celery stalks itself. That's beyond budget-friendly. That's just cruel. This is apparently how you feed a nation. I kind of wonder if I should chop them up just to make sure you know everyone gets a little bit. Celery leaves. This is where the money is. And then he calls for the green part of two leeks. I mean, by the green part, does he just mean the top bits? I'm just gonna take off the worst of the white bits, but this is so wasteful, why not just use the whole leek? I'm gonna slice these as thin as I can to, again, make sure everyone gets a little bit. This looks pretty rubbish. 
and I'm just gonna blame the fact that I can't really bend my finger right now. So I'm gonna add in our turnip peelings, the leeks, and let us not forget that vivacious beauty celery leaves. So now it tells us to cook that for another 10 minutes. So now we have to add, add half a pound of pearl barley and half a pound of flour. So now I'm gonna add our lovely pearl barley. Try and get it coated in what little fat we've got in here. And then half a pound of flour. This is looking like a snowstorm. Now we need to add in two gallons of water. Oh, doesn't this look tasty? So now we've added two gallons of water, Sawyer isn't done treating us. So Sawyer now asks us to add a quarter of an ounce of brown sugar, three ounces of salt for 20 people. All right, here we go. A little bit of sweet and a lot of salty. Oh my goodness. I just kept going and going. Now we're told to simmer it gently for three hours. So three, two, ow, that hurt. Three hours later, we have soup. This is so gonna be worth it. So I had to fish around it for about a minute and a half until I actually found one of the few bits of beef in this beef soup. Oh! <laughs> oh! <sighs> that is honestly like someone has marinated a turnip in some seawater. Come on, let me find that one chunk of beef I managed to find. Where are you? Mmm. Oh. <laughs> this is honestly inedible. Modern food writers look at Alexis Sawyer as one of the first great celebrity chefs and also one of the great first celebrity food campaigners almost. However, during his time, he wasn't without his critics. The Irish press, for example, were particularly negative around his efforts to help during the potato famine. They accused his soup kitchens of being everything from publicity stunts to churning out meals with insufficient nutritional value. Alexis Sawyer, philanthropist, inventor of fish and chips, creator of briny soup water. What a legacy.